Okay guys, let's look at what we're going to need to get started. The first thing we're going to need to look for is a camera. Uh, now obviously cameras can be quite expensive, so um, you might want to go for something like a bridge camera. Uh, this is a Fujifilm, it's a Finepix SL. Um, I say this is something that you can start with if you're on a budget. Um, you, you can change the settings to a certain degree in this, although it is limited, and you, you can shoot it on manual, and you can change the aperture and the shutter. Uh, and you have a bit more control over it than you would just a point and shoot. So if you really are on a budget, something like this could work to get you started. But the big, big drawback with this camera is that it doesn't have a changeable lens. Although the one on it's not too bad to be fair, being able to change the lens is a really big help. So what I'd really recommend if you want to start photography is going for something like a uh, digital SLR uh, where you can change the lens on it. Okay, so um, this one's actually uh, this one's actually D300, this is really old now. I'm actually shooting on my main camera at the moment. But this will give you an idea of what I look for. Um, I, I use Nikon, that's just because the first camera I, I ever shot professionally was a Nikon. And since then, I just understand the camera and how it works. If you're adamant, uh, Canon's for you, go for Canon. It's uh, a camera's a camera at the end of the day. So a digital SLR is going to give us a lot of control over all the individual aspects we're going to need. Uh, we're going to be able to change the aperture, the shutter, we'll be able to change the ISO, the picture quality, and also we're going to be able to change lenses. Now the reason I chose the D750 was because it's got a built-in flash. I can also control off-camera flash using the same flash on the camera. I've got a built-in Wi-Fi, so if I'm shooting a a uh, family do, I can actually send the picture straight from my camera to my phone and email them out to the people there and then on that day, which is obviously a really big benefit. And it also shoots film as well, and as you can see I'm using it now to shoot this film. Uh, it's such a beautiful camera, I really love it, highly recommend it. So if you've got any more questions about cameras, uh, post them in the section below. But ultimately, a digital DSLR is the perfect start. Obviously if we've got a camera where we can change lenses, we're going to want to look at what lenses we can get. Uh, now. Now everybody's going to want a standard lens to start with most likely. You want to be looking at around a 50mm. Um, alternatively, uh, something like this can be quite useful. Um, what is this one? This is uh, the Nikon. This is a Nikon 18-200mm. Um, it's an all round lens. This, this goes from wide angle to telephoto and it will pretty much cover everything you basically need until you get up to a higher level. The only downside, or the massive downside with this lens, is that it's a DX lens, which means it's actually not full frame. So when you put it on your camera, on a full frame camera, it's actually going to crop the picture in slightly, and you're not going to get full use of your sensor in your camera. However, if your camera is not full frame, a lens like this would be absolutely perfect. And to be fair, that's all you're going to really need to start. Uh, a camera and a decent lens. Now, if you want to go further, you might want to look at what sort of pictures you want to be taking. If you want a picture with a nice uh, blurred background but a very sharp foreground, you might want to look at something like a long lens. This is a Sigma, a 70 to 200mm. Um, now, a lot of people who are just starting photography might think that a, a long lens will just help you zoom in closer, but actually the thing I use a long lens for the most is actually blurring out background. So uh, we'll come to that in a later video. So if you want to take pictures like this, for example, you might want to think about looking at a long lens. Now you can get these really cheap. Um, I'll put a link down below to the 70 to 300 I use quite often. It's nice and small. It's fairly cheap. It's not a great build, but it does take decent pictures. I once used it as a backup when I was uh, shooting a football game at Wembley before, and uh, it had great results. So bearing in mind, it's about 3,000 pounds less than the alternative lens. It's really not a bad start at all. Now another lens you may want to look at if you're going to want to be shooting close-up things. Uh, I use this uh, at weddings for, um, for wedding rings for example. Uh, they're also great for things like insects. Anything small that you want to get up nice and close to, these are the perfect lenses. So again, if you're going to be taking pictures of small things, you might want to consider a macro lens. And I must say, like when you get macro photography, it's one of my favourite ways to be taking pictures. Um, this is a uh, Sigma 105. Um, I can drop the link in the description below. As I say, this is one of my favourite lenses. Now, if you want to be shooting pictures with long exposures, um, for example this kind of picture, you might want to consider getting something like a tripod or a monopod. I'd recommend just a cheap tripod to start off with if you're going to be doing short exposures. Um, I say there are ways around this, but um, it's a really nice start if you, if you want to be doing long exposures to have a tripod. 
The last thing I'm going to mention, it's not a necessity at this stage, but you might want to consider getting a flash gun. As you go on, um, you're, you're going to find that the light is not always adequate where you want it at certain times. You can use these for a whole array of lighting. Uh, you can bounce, you can use them to bounce light off the ceiling. You can use them off camera to light something from the side. Uh, they're really fun to have a play with later on, but um, I say it's really not a necessity at this stage. Hey guys, that's going to get you off to a really nice start. As you go on, you're probably going to find you're going to want to be looking at things like gels, filters, uh, remote timers, maybe want to get into studio lights. There are so many different accessories you can go for. But just starting off, this is a really good start. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.